All right, I'm going to show you three types of refined blending and cutting. It depends on the, the assets that you're trying to merge. So here we have a night sky and we have a daytime sky. In this instance, these are both organic textures, right? Like if there were one field of grass and another field of grass, and I've already tried to match their colors and their lighting using direct image adjustments, levels, color balance, hue saturation. In this case, they are very, very different from each other. The delineation between them is really, really stark. But let's pretend that there were two skies that I wanted to blend together. The way I would do it is actually very simple. First, I make sure I have a lot of overlap. This is where doing the rough cut comes in. What do I mean by overlap? It means that as I erase from one, there needs to be something behind the other one that fills it in. Otherwise, I'll just get to the checkerboard of, of no pixels. So I mostly have that. There's a few little gaps where I don't have that. So what do I do? The first thing to do is to get rid of your hard edges. So I'm going to use my eraser tool at 100% opacity. I'm going to use my tablet, though you don't need to, but the big advantage of the tablet is any tool will have these brush settings you're going to choose this option, which makes your brush pressure sensitive, your stylus pressure sensitive, which means I could pick a very big size, like 600 pixels, use my tablet, and that's huge, but if I barely touch, it will be a much smaller version than if I push down hard. That's the pressure sensitivity, very helpful. So the problem is if I erase it with this, Notice it's just replacing one hard edge with another hard edge. So the other brush setting I need is not just the size, which I want it to be big. I want it to be 0% hardness. So it's really big, 100% opacity to get obliterate this hard edge, but 0 degrees or 0% hardness. So that gives me a soft blended edge. Remember, this is what I would use if I'm blending an organic texture into an organic texture, like a cloudy sky. And even though that really doesn't work color-wise, that transition is a whole lot better than that straight edge that you see there. Then once you've gotten absolutely rid of that hard edge, then you can go in with smaller levels of opacity or lower levels of opacity and start biting away at it and start transitioning it. And believe it or not, it will start to look pretty believable. All right, so that's one way of blending. It works pretty well for far backgrounds where edges are soft and colors kind of shift together. Problem is these are such different colors. So I'm going to go back before I did all that erasing in my history. Go to my levels, my hue saturation, right? And my levels here. So now, instead of blending with this soft-edged eraser, I am going to just try to select it. And because this is all one pretty even tone, I am going to use the magic wand like we've used in our exercises. I'm going to make sure contiguous is checked, and I'm going to use a tolerance of around 32, though I think 16 is the default in PhotoP. And then I just click on it, and look what it does. It gives me almost perfect selection of just those pixels that are touching. Remember, contiguous is checked. So it only selects pixels that are touching each other that are similar, similar within a tolerance of 32. Then I hit delete and it cuts it out, but then I hit command D to deselect. And if I zoom in on it, it cuts it out like so sharp that it's not really believable because it's actually slipping between the pixels. So what can I do to change that? I'm gonna go back and before I use the magic wand, I'm going to set my tool settings for the magic wand to have a feather of two pixels. 
So I just put two in there. Hit return. So now I do the same thing. Magic wand selects it. But now when I hit delete, look what happens. Two pixels out from where I selected, it kind of radiates. And then if I hit delete again, it will bite back two pixels and kind of gradate them and blend them. Again, 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 again. I can keep doing that. And that gives me a much more believable edge. So they look like they're from the same photograph. Right? So there's not just selecting edges. There's also the edge quality of how hard or soft it is. And you will never in compositing want an edge that's perfectly clean. You'll always want at least one pixel of feathering at this resolution. Okay, now I have these areas, right? And I'm going to show you a third way, which is pretty obvious when you think about it. This is just using the lasso tool. And this feels pretty arbitrary where that sky disappeared and this ridge line appeared. So I'm just going to use my lasso tool and I'm going to draw my own kind of mountainside and then just erase it out. But again, the problem is that is slipping between pixels. So next time I do it, I'm going to set my lasso tool to have a two pixel feather. So I type in two, hit return, I'm going to hit command D to deselect. And now when I do it, Again, I cut into my mountain, and I just kind of find my ridge, any kind of organic shape I want. Delete. You can see that it's echoing a few pixels, which makes it a lot more believable. And I can find that edge wherever I want. Maybe I want it right there. So you can add that feather to anything you're doing. And I want that night sky to come even further, so I might even just use my magic wand and extend it to down here. Right? And my magic wand has that feather of two pixels. Delete, delete, delete. There we go. I can do it here as well. Delete, 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 delete. There we go. Now, if I'm trying to get it to all match, because this is one reference, this is the other, let's play with those direct <coughs> adjustments again, now that I've cut it out. Levels first. Do I want it to go brighter or darker? Maybe I want to goose the highlights just a little bit, because I limited them before. Goose the shadows just a little bit. Like so. Next, that's levels. Next is color balance. And I'm going to give that yellow a little bit more yellow in the midtones. Push it towards yellow. There's a lot of yellow behind. Then in the shadows, I'm going to push more blue into them. More red. Ah, just a touch. Okay, and then... In hue saturation, I'm going to take the saturation up a little bit. Just trying to find what feels right. And then I can go back to levels. Because what I really want to do is keep darkening those midtones. And then let's take the shadow saturation down. And there are other ways we'll be learning how to manipulate these things. But that will work. So now that kind of blends a little bit better in my mind than it did before. All right. And that's just those layers. It's maybe a little blue, but I can work with it. Next is this one. So I'm going to hit Command S. Save my progress. Meg, good to remember. 
Command S, once you've finished one thing, you just hit Command S and it will save your progress right on top of the same file, as long as you have it saved in name. So it's always good to know where you're saving to and from. And I'm saving to my folder right there. All right, now this is some nice organic stuff, right? But before I start blending it, I wanna play with those direct image adjustments, first levels. Oh, gotta be on the right layer. There we go. So image adjustments, levels, really darken. Why does it keep selecting the wrong layer? Annoying. Image adjustments, levels on the right layer. Move it darker. There we go. Limit the highlights just a little bit. Color balance. I'm just going to add a little bit of blue to it so it's more that night kind of sky. A little bit of cyan. I'm going to go a little faster. And now I can start blending it. I can play with hue saturation. That's the third one. But that's the tool I don't always use. That's the protractor. I'll just take the saturation down a little bit. All right. I'm going to try blending. I'm going to use my big soft eraser at 100% opacity. So think of it. It has those three qualities. It's big, it's soft edged, 0% hardness, and 100% opaque. And I have to get rid of all those hard edges. Where it overlaps. Obliterate all those hard edges. Now I can go in with a lower opacity and start kind of stepping it down. Because maybe I want some of these little wispy clouds in the mountains. And what I have to be careful to do is not cut into the mountain itself. right? And I can zoom in. But this is my far background. Now, another way is to use my magic wand, like we discussed before. I can hold down shift, select multiple things beyond that mountain. right? And now this is a cool technique. Now that I've used my magic wand, I've kind of stenciled it so I won't accidentally erase into that mountain anymore, but I can still use that selection as a stencil and now softly transition it. And the mountain will stay nice and crisp. And if Photo P starts to lag on you a little bit, just be patient with it. It takes a lot of memory to do this, but remember to save it when you're done. All right, so you see that made a big difference. And all that transition is there. So soft edges. Next, I have this tree. What would be a good way to blend and cut this tree out? Should I try to just draw it with my lasso? It's a whole lot of little branches. Yeah, magic wand would be great for this. So if I keep it with the original settings, 32 and contiguous, this is all the, the white pixels that are touching, as long as I'm on the right layer. So if I do that, great. But notice there's a lot more white pixels than the ones I'm touching, right? Yeah, so if you uncheck contiguous, because there aren't a lot of white pixels I want in the tree, if I uncheck contiguous and click on the white, then it will check, click on the white everywhere, whether they're touching or not. And because I have that two pixel feather on it, when I hit delete, it will give me that little halo around things that's there anyway. But that's not bad 